part 1.3 of energy goes on to talk about national and global energy resources and how we use them and why we make the choices that we make with our use of energy resources. Essentially, the energy resources we use to generate electricity on Earth are fossil fuels, coal, oil and gas. That's the most traditional way. We still use a lot of that. Nuclear fuels, biofuels, wind, hydroelectricity, geothermal, tidal and wave. Now, you don't need to describe exactly how each type of electricity generation works. We used to in the old GCC, and so a lot of teachers still teach that. And it might be interesting to know how a power plant works, but actually we don't need to describe that in these new GCSEs. What we need to be able to do is to be able to compare them and give reasons why we would use one over another. We need to be able to evaluate the energy resources. When I teach this topic, I actually call it evaluating energy resources. And we might choose one for one reason and another for another reason in a different context. And we'll talk about context in a second. Define what a renewable energy resource is. That's a resource which comes back as quickly as we can use it. A non-renewable then is the opposite of that. Fossil fuels and nuclear fuels are examples of non-renewable resources. They're finite. They will run out at the current rate of consumption. That's the key point there. It's not as simply as a renewable energy resource will never run out. That's not quite correct. A renewable energy resource comes back as quickly as we can use them. This topic is not just about the way we generate electricity. We also use some of the resources for transport and for heating. Some resources are more reliable than others. In most countries, we're currently unable to rely solely on renewable energy, energy resources. For this reason, we have to have what we call an energy mix. So we need to move to a low carbon energy mix to avoid permanent environmental damage to our planet. Now you need to have a detailed understanding of the advantages, disadvantages and the environmental impact of each energy resources and you need to be prepared to apply them to a context in a question. An advantage in one context might be a disadvantage in another context and that's really why this topic gets a little bit tricky. You also need to be able to take values from graphs and charts and be able to take values and make conclusions with them. So these three graphs actually show different things. It's very important the first thing you do is always analyse exactly what the graph is showing so compare the two axes together this shows energy in thousands of terawatt hours per year across the whole world and it compares these different resources it starts from 1965 to almost 2020 there is a slight difference between this graph and this second graph here which is actually adding the values together to give you the value on the y-axis so there's a kind of cumulative energy use here and this is only comparing those three different sources renewable nuclears and fossils so you can still see around the world and this is where the title is useful around the world we are still using majority fossil fuels there's this really interesting dip here whereby we used a little bit less between the years of about 2006 and 2009 that may have been because of the economic recession but they will give you some clues as to what reasons it might be if they ask if they're interested in some of these little trends here if they ask you to suggest reasons then the answer to that might be as simple as well people are using less electricity or because people were buying less, the demand was lower. You don't need to go into the detail, well, maybe there was a global recession at that point. You need to just have that idea that, you just need to have that simple idea that there was actually less demand for electricity or energy during those years around the world. Here though, this pie chart is just showing the UK's electrical energy mix. So it's not all of energy, it's just energy used to generate electricity. And you can see here we have much larger slice still fossil fuels then nuclear and then some renewables as well and also this slice that we actually import from other countries so you get this idea that what you need to be able to do with these is just to spot trends maybe compare changes or maybe overall demand between different sources this is a kind of discursive likely to be a four mark or a six mark written answer where you have to take data out of these charts and use them to make comparisons normally and make conclusions now really take this in that you need to avoid non-scientific language about energy resources. Don't say green energy, for example. Don't say pollutes. Be really specific. Use exacting language. Use exact language like does not release greenhouse gases, is carbon neutral, does not release acidic pollutants. Also be specific about the costs that you discuss. Don't just say nuclear costs more. You will not get a mark for that. Nuclear power stations are expensive to build or maintain they have high decommissioning costs. That's the type of language you need to get into your answer here. To continue the example of nuclear, nuclear is actually less expensive per megawatt power output than a lot of other options, which is one of the advantages of it, in fact. 
So just to say nuclear costs a lot doesn't give as much detail. Be really specific about the advantages and disadvantages that you give.